In addition to the choral group coming to us from Salvation Army, our speaker is from the Salvation Army. In fact, he's, he's the head of the local Salvation Army. He's Major Michael Himes. He was appointed as a Corps Commanding Officer and Pastor of the Salvation Army here in Schenectady, June 2011. He's the son of Salvation Army officers. He was born in West Virginia and since has managed to live in Massachusetts, the Bronx, Connecticut, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Kentucky. <laughs> you know, the Salvation Army and the U.S. military are very much alike in that regard. Prior to entering the officer training school in New York, Mike was an insurance agent, a school teacher, and a divisional music director for the Salvation Army. Mike and his wife, Kathy, entered the school for officer training in 1990. They were stationed in Spring Valley, New York for 11 years before becoming divisional youth officers in the Western Pennsylvania Division. Then they were directors of the Salvation Army Student Fellowship Center at Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky, which is a national headquarters appointment. Mike has a degree in organizational management from Nyack College, is currently working on a Master's of Biblical Studies from Ashbury Theological Seminary. The Himes have three grown children. Mike is an avid musician himself. In addition to his voice, he plays the trumpet and just about anything else made out of brass. <laughs> He's interested in the Civil War's history and because he speaks some Spanish and Creole, has, he knows how to order in a Mexican restaurant, so you want to go with Mike. But he, he actually has delivered the Salvation Army's message to the people of Haiti in languages that they could understand. So please join me now in welcoming Major Michael Himes. Terrific. I'm not going to be long, really. Uh, I will be doing a monologue in just a moment as Barabbas, the character from the Bible. Can everybody hear me pretty clearly? Yes, yes typically I, I speak pretty, pretty loudly. Uh, chapter 27 of Matthew says this in the first and second verse, and then I'm going to go 11 through 26. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor, Verse 11, meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd at that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. When Pilate, while Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you, asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah, Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate, but they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and our own children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Now use your imagination if you can tonight.
<clears throat> and I am Barabbas, and I am a free man looking at my cross, only I'm not on it. I'm just standing here alive, and he is there dying. I shouldn't hang around here for long. Everybody knows who I am. Everybody knows what I've done. To some, I'm a hero, a man of action. To others, a man to be feared. My name is Terror to the Romans. They trapped me and arrested me. It was inevitable. I knew it was going to happen. I knew that someday they would catch me, and so I wasn't afraid. Oh, they can kill me, but there's only one of me, and I've killed lots of them. So it was worth it. The trial was a, a foregone conclusion. So there I sat on death row, waiting for the inevitable. When all of a sudden I heard this, this chanting, Barabbas, 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 over and over. They called my name, oh, more trouble. <laughs> I was up to my neck in trouble. I was at the end of the line on death row. I was going to be nailed to a cross naked, laughed at. And if I wasn't dead by sundown, they would come and break both my legs just to hurry me along. Yes, even Pilate isn't stupid enough to leave us up there over the Sabbath. So with that in mind, I really wasn't bothered what they could do to me. I mean, what could they do worse than crucifixion? Having that over your head tends to clear your mind. Why be frightened of anything else? Next thing that happened, there was, a, there was a key turned in the lock. They unchained me, took me outside, and just let me go. I stood there blinking in the sunlight, but not for very long. I didn't know what had happened, but I knew my chance. And I wasn't going to hang around long enough for them to determine that they'd made some kind of a mistake. <laughs> so I ran. And I ran. And I ran. And I kept on running. If I've got the story straight, Pilate gave them the chance. A choice. Release Jesus. Or release me. Barabbas, and they chose me. And for the first time in I don't know how, how many years, I, I felt unsure. No, let me be honest. I was scared. Until today, I've been certain. You see, the fight has been everything. The fight to rid our land of these filthy Romans has been the most important thing. And I was certain, it was all clear in my mind, I would fight them, and when I was caught, I would die. And it would be worth it. Because the fight was everything. And I was proud to die for the cause. I'd never been more certain. Only now... Something's changed. I feel like I'm part of something bigger, bigger than the fight. Yes, I said it, bigger than the fight. I feel like, I feel like I'm part of a different story, some other story, and I don't even know which side I'm on. I mean, in, it wasn't my choice to be in this whole thing, but I feel like I'm involved. 
and I don't like it. I don't, I don't even understand it. Jesus, what's happening? What's going on? Why are you dying on my cross? It just doesn't make any sense. You're the dreamer. You're the nice guy. All this talk about the kingdom. But to what end? Because you were never going to join our fight. All dreams. All talk. No action. But they say that in front of Pilate, you said nothing. All this talk before and now. You had your chance. And you said nothing. And I can't understand why. Why does this whole thing, why does it feel like a nightmare? What cause are you dying for? Are you dying for me? In my place? That doesn't make any sense. I'm the fearless man of action. Fight to the death, that's me. But now, I'm doing nothing. I'm just standing here. And you, you're there on my cross. And I feel scared. Normally, we do not applaud for the men who speak at this pulpit, but that was phenomenal. That was an excellent, excellent uh, picture painted with words to drive home a point. And uh, Major Himes did a fa fabulous job.